please welcome our first speaker, uh, New Year for Open Media, um, Arnaud. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm pleased to see uh, that much people uh, at uh, so early uh, on a Sunday. Uh, so I'm here to, pre to present you Tessel, which is um, an image um, viewer and annotator for the web. Um, I'm working at uh, Sciences Po Media Lab, which is a sociology uh, laboratory. And down there, I'm sponsored by the Forecast uh, Cursus, which uh, aims uh, at, um, well, as it's explained here, uh, to, to teach students and therefore future researchers uh, to study controversies on the web and how how controversies proliferated uh, on the web with the new tools. So that means that my work is to build tools for researchers and students. So um, uh, researchers are really strange people, uh, like everyone, uh, like every group of person. We have very different set of technical capabilities uh, for our researchers. Uh, for example, the, the, the guy on the right, uh, Donato, uh, he's, um, uh, he's known, well, know a lot of skill. I know researchers that train their own uh, AI with uh, their own uh, neural networks and everything. And there are others that can't even autocorrect the iPad autocorrect. If you read some emails written by Brunato, you'll know that some phrases are unreadable because he doesn't correct and well, it's uh, yeah, it's easy to say you're not postmodern when you can't correct your iPad. But uh, and they have a need to share um, their work. Uh, easily and in a permanent way um, if they have a publication and everything or, or works that are published on scientific reviews, uh, well, the, the publication needs to stay and to be fixed. And uh, the main point is that uh, researchers want to explore things and they don't want to have to install uh, EV machinery or EV things on computers. They can't build their own infrastructure to, uh, well, for example, uh, open big images. I can't ask a, a researcher to set up a tile server for himself. So I have to build tools which are easy to use. And uh, yeah, that's it, easy to use. And. Um, my journey with uh, big images, well, that's why I will call uh, HD images. I think it's funnier. Um, my journey with big images uh, started not because of an unskilled, technically unskilled uh, researcher, but because of the skilled one. Um, one day, Donato came to me and said, well, I need to annotate and build some storytelling around the network. Uh, yeah, well, that's good. We already have uh, tools in the data in the media lab uh, to do that. Um, the problem is uh, that yeah, he know a little bit of JavaScript, so he made something terrible. He on his graph, SVG graph, he replaced uh, all the nodes, so just a circle in SVG, by HD images. Well, I don't know, well, I know why he did it, but it's, uh, it resolved to a really, really big image. So it told me, ah, my computer does not work anymore. It's too low. I can't open this graph, this network. Because, well, the image it generated was 700 uh, mega octets. So when you try to open an image that big, it will uh, at least his or my computer pff, explodes. And the other question he asked me is, wow, why are you always using the same picture of me? Don't you have any other picture of me? I No, I don't. That will be creepy. Um, so my journey started with this conversation. And to sum up, I will 
I needed to be able to open really big images. So I, if you, well, I, uh, if you can imagine, a network is already kind of a big image. If you take one of these nodes and make it uh, well an HD image, uh, everything scales up, and it just it's well, it's way too much for uh, for a computer. Uh, let's define what's a kind of a, a big image. We'll. Well, uh, we stumble up upon big image and how to use it, in, especially in cartography, um, when you use graph and, or networks uh, or for any well, high-resolution uh, photography. Uh, is it the weight that counts? Uh, not really. There is a big HD image that are not that heavy. Um, we will talk more about uh, size in pixels. And to, for me, a big, big, well, a big image is uh, around 100 uh, megapixels. So it's starting to, yeah, or, well, they see. Some example of uh, big images. Uh, this one I love is uh, the Andromeda Galaxy. It's really big because it is uh, 40,000 light years long. So this is big. Uh, it represents uh, hundreds of millions of thousands of stars. And the original TIFF size is, I don't know, 4 giga? I, uh, yeah, four, whatever. So it is a big image. Uh, we will try to open it now to see how a computer works. So I, I, I clicked on it. Uh, oh, up. Sorry. I have to leave the window mode. And, well, okay. This is unexpected. I can't even show it to you. Okay. Nice. Well, um, this is kind of the point. Uh, this is what the, this wasn't how it was supposed to to happen. But uh, the thing that was supposed to happen that even the Mac native uh, image viewer uh, can, cannot zoom on an image that big. If you uh, zoom a bit uh, in it, the the images fade out, and it, it you can't see every bit of you can see the the stars. And that's a shame if you have uh, 40, 100 million of stars. So, okay, I'll do it faster. There is uh, another picture that I love is the Tabula Puntingeliana, uh, which is uh, a beautiful map, kind of map, uh, a network. So it was drawn in uh, 1265 in. Um, in Colmar, uh, in France, it's uh, seven meters long and 30 centimeters high uh, image. Uh, it's a cool one because it represents networks. Because, um, uh, it's, it's, it's not projected by uh, geographical standards. It's projected uh, with um, uh, uh, travel duration between points. So, but with Try to open it uh, also, but I'm fearing the same problem will come. Ah, 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 ou alors, c'est moi qui me trompe. Voilà. Yeah, excuse me. Um, so this is the tabula penutilculina. So this is what happens when I try to open it. It crashed. So this is a problem. Up. Uh, I am a bit lost. Sorry. Where is my computer? Okay. Uh, what's the problem? The images are too big. A big image is big. Uh, the, the computer cannot handle it. Uh, we could uh, sample it down, uh, but 
that's not my, what I want to do. I want to be able to navigate through the image and build a storytelling about it. Um, so I don't want any trade-off for that. Uh, so uh, who do you think is going to save us? Well, when we talk about big images, who are you going to call? Um, this is not the Ghostbuster. This is the Triple IF, uh, which is an uh, amazing group of persons working, especially in museum, uh, archives, uh, libraries, uh, <coughs> which have uh, developed an entire uh, um, standard on how to open big images. Uh, this standard describes um, how to deliver images uh, following an API. Um, it's to, uh, how to resize and rotate and change the quality of an image. Um, but as you can see here, I want I, um, the, 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 the standard is using a server. And I don't want any server because I just want to drag and drop things. And because, yeah, these researchers don't have time to put on a tiling server for their researchers and as their exploration. Uh, this next one up is, is bugged. So I needed to do some front end tiling. Uh, this was a fun exploration. How would you do that? Uh, well, there is one big gun uh, uh, solution is to bring uh, image magic into the, the browser. Uh, it's possible, it is, well, we'll talk about it. And the other point will be to use the, the tools inside the browser, which is the canvas, when we want to modify a roster of images. Um, so the WASP, image magic, has been compiled and is uh, open sourced on GitHub. Uh, we can open it. No. Yes. So this is an example, and well, there is already something, but uh, I will replay it. Why is it so slow to 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 put only one image? Well, we'll see it next. Um, there is two solutions. <coughs> Mm -mm -mm -mm. I uh, so we can use um, image magic to crop every images uh, and boot image magic every time, or we can um, build uh, one really, really long uh, command to tell image magic to build everything in one execution. Um, those two solutions aren't really great. First, uh, the, was, the, the was version of image magic is slow to start. This is what's happening here when I reload. Well, for me, the, the, to generate a black and white image and just rotate it, it should not take that half a second that you can see. And if I want to generate and cut a uh, hundred of images, I can't wait, I can't have half a second for every images on boot time. Um, the other point uh, to how to, um, if I generate every image in one command line, um, the, my memory will crash because I already have one big image in my RAM and if I generate a thousand of images, uh, smaller images for, for the tiling, it will you know, make my computer explode again. My computer explodes a lot of time. Uh, often. Uh, so uh, the both solutions with image magic was not working for me. Were not working for me. So it was and uh, it was not that fast. I am really sorry. I uh, lost my uh, benchmarks. Uh, so please believe me. I will uh, try to make them again. But it takes a long time to to tile images. So I preferred. Uh, I will do other things. Um, so. The, my next solution was to use the tools inside the, the browser. 
which is the canvas. And we have now in JavaScript uh, something really cool that we call generators. Uh, I guess from other language, you, well, you all know what is it. Uh, so we can uh, now only generate image one by one, so storing them and going to the next image. Well, there is some code for uh, the, the nerds like me. Uh, this is how you resize an image uh, using canvas in JavaScript. Uh, you send the image, uh, well, x and y position, the area you want to show, and the width and height of the other of the output image. Um, yeah, the problem is uh, for the moment that using canvas uh, blocked the main thread. There is something called off-screen canvas uh, that's is supposed to exist, but is not implemented in, in well, I guess only in Chrome beta. That will allow me to that will allow me to draw uh, images without blocking the UI. But well, no, it doesn't exist yet on every navigator. Uh, so to sum up how the the, the generation works. Um, I calculate my well, coordinates for the tiles. Uh, the scale factors is the, the, the level of zoom, so how much I will have to zoom to generate this matrix of images. For each of these images, well, this is a quick sample. This is not real code, but uh, this is approximately how it, how it works. And uh, well, for I calculate the number of lines and columns I need and go through this, to go through this matrix and generate uh, image. It just yields uh, positions and area with an eight, and I just generate an image, get gen uh, generate a URL, URL for this image, save it to the local storage, and, uh, et voila, I can uh, go to the next image. The first one will, can be uh, garbage collected, so memory is freed and can be freed uh, for each generation. But yeah, so they're generated, uh, but what? Uh, it's a blob fish because now, uh, thanks to IndexedDB, I can stop blobs in, uh, in, uh, in the memory of the browser. Uh, and well, you've seen it here. Um, I generate a URL, but why? We'll generate a URL on... Uh, Local, uh, if you're doing everything locally, it is to follow the uh, triple IF um, standard, uh, but with less thing because I said to you I don't need a server, so I just generate those images, those URLs, and after that, well, the, so the image is stored in IndexedDB uh, with a corresponding URL. That will match the EEF standards, well, or any other cartography. If, well, if you use cartography and if you knew, uh, well, uh, all tiles work. Uh, this is the really simple part of uh, this visualization. Um, so it's just a leaflet uh, layer, uh, which instead of going to the network to fetch images, it goes, just goes to the browser memory. Um, and we still uh, save a little bit of memory by using uh, a LRU cache, which is uh, really cool. It's uh, the least read, least <coughs> least read. Uh, no. no, 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 no. Least, least, recent. least recently updated image. So I, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I. Well, this is a way of telling I don't want to stock a lot of uh, URLs. So when the list called URL is kicked off the list, I unlock it and memory is freed again. Uh, okay, I have... Uh, okay, I will just show you some results of how does it work uh, 
up uh, this is the tabula uh, annotated. Uh, up, uh, preview. And now we can navigate through it. Oh yeah, like up. So this is just by by drag and dropping an image into Tessel. Uh, I well, it takes a little bit of time to parse it, like a few minutes, and I have nine seconds left, so I won't be able to show it to you. But uh, we can now navigate into the image and uh, explore it. Uh, we can build a, a storytelling. Now I'm supposed to explain you this whole perfect map. This is uh, Britannia, uh, my country, in France. Uh, well, we'll follow this up. Uh, this is uh, Laval, uh, this is uh, Lutes, Lutern, which will come to become Paris. So, well, all this, ah, all this part is France. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, we can continue. This is obviously now Italy, up with Roma in the middle. Um, yeah, we can tap. And so this image will, yeah, there is also Tunis, which is kind of here. Uh, I don't remember. Constantinople, which is on the other side. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, this is how, the, this is the result of uh, the presentation. And the tool will soon be used. Uh, in the uh, paper, oh, yeah, too much security. Excuse me. Up, 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 up. Just want to show you one last thing, and we'll go back to this collection. This is a network built to show the, um, the, the discussion, well, controversies over AI. So this is a researcher that d done that up uh, lecture. And well, the, it will be published and uh, people will navigate on this image and see, well, this is the part I don't remember. Uh, well, ouais, on s'en fiche un peu. Uh, but well, we, yeah, we can navigate and, in, and, and see the uh, Storytelling built by the user. I will stop now because I have talked too much. <laughs> so last I checked, we have no question, uh, online question. Is there any question from the floor? No? Yeah? Uh, well, the yeah. Uh, so the, the the question was, uh, can I uh, use well use Tessel with uh, image that the browser cannot handle by itself? Um, yes or no? I, I'm at the limit uh, because um, it can the the image the sky image. I, we, you can open it on Firefox. But it will take time to load, even if uh, you're on local network. Um, it, it will zoom really well. Uh, I my my knee, moins bien. Uh, it zoom less <laughs> good. I'm sorry, I'm losing my words. And uh, mainly, sometimes the image just fades out. And it's just merry, I don't know, I don't know what's happening, just fades out and I need to move again and the loading will start again and everything. So, uh, yes, but uh, Navigator, I, to be honest, really good already at opening images and everything. Well, 
the size limit, it depends, uh, yeah, uh, what's the limit of the image, the, the size of the image I can stock in Tesla. Uh, well, the whole point is um, I, the memory allocated to the browser by the system is approximately 10% of the free uh, space on your hard drive, so this is my limit and uh, time to pass everything because the the sky one uh, takes you know, some you know, like 20 minutes to pass entirely and it's like uh, 10 level of zooms okay and yeah sorry for my <laughs>